All right, so I've just opened up my script in uh, Visual Studio here. Here I can see are all the public parameters that I just outlined. All right, so on start, we are going to stop by uh, calling don't destroy on load. And what that does is it makes sure that the menu uh, stays active even when the scene changes. So when I load a video scene, the video scene will probably not have a menu in it. And we can just use the same menu from the main menu scene over and over in all of our scenes. All right, we're going to call this bind buttons to scenes method here. So let's go down and find that. It's going to be down here. Here's my method bind buttons to scene. All right, so first we're going to be checking to see if the buttons in the scene match up to the number of scenes to load in the game manager. And if they don't, then we're going to say, hey, amount of buttons and scenes do not match. All right. And if they do match, we are going to simply bind those buttons uh, when they are clicked to call this method here, which is uh, select scene under the game manager. So where exactly is my game manager? It is under my video manager game object here. And my game manager object has a couple parameters that are very important as well. We have a scenes to load array, and this is going to be of the same size as our buttons to load array in the menu manager. So we have three scenes to load here. Element zero is 3D home interior. That's going to match up to this button house. 2D lookout is going to match up to this button Mont Royale. And 3D waterfront is going to match up to this button waterfront. And then we have some other UI settings here. So we have a checkbox check to use fade. And that means that when the scenes are loading, we're going to be fading in and out between the scenes. And since I have that use fade box checked, I need to define what is the fade image that's covering up the menu. And what is the control UI, meaning the UI that we want to be covered. And then or the UI that we just kind of want to turn off in between scenes. And then the loading UI is um, the loading text, and that will become active in between the scenes. So let's open up the game manager script. Going down to select scene. So we can remember that the menu manager script uh, on start, we're calling this instance of binding buttons to scene and we're just binding the on click event to call this game manager uh, select scene for the cert for that scene name when it's clicked. So we're not actually running any methods, we're just simply binding the methods there. And then when we do get a click event on one of the buttons, we can call this select scene method under the game manager here. And here it is. And this select scene method just takes in a string of what scene to load. And here we're checking to see if we're going to use that fading. And if we are going to use the fading, we're going to need to start the coroutine called fade out and in. And we need to use a coroutine because we're going to be using yield a lot to wait for things to load and animations to finish and whatnot before we um, start the next scene. And if we're not using fading, then we're just going to call this uh, function on the scene manager. We're just going to load the next scene. And what that simply does is it just loads the next scene. And then I'm just, I have this string here called active scene. Um, and that's just mostly for debugging. Um, it's here under the scene management, it's empty right now because I haven't hit play, but when I hit play, we should see it pop up in there. Yeah, so now that I've hit play, we can see the active scene is number four, main menu editor. All right. Okay, so let's go into this uh, fade out and in coroutine. 
And this looks like a lot, so I'm just going to briefly go over it. And if you're curious about um, how it was written, everything is commented and available for you to reuse. Um, we are going to get um, references to um, an animation and the fade image. Um, and then we are going to turn the control UI off and turn the loading UI on. Let's go back in here and see what those things are. Okay, so I have my fade out image right here. So we're getting a reference to this, and then we're also getting a reference to the animation that's on top of it. So the image itself, we can see right here, is just a black box. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fade that black box in and out when we need to load the new scene. So I'll open up my animator, all right. And on fade in, um, if my condition fade out is set to true, then I'm gonna transition from fade in to fade out. And um, in reverse, if fade out is set to false, then I will animate from fade out to fade in. All right, so let's actually see this in action here. If I hit play, first we're gonna see this black box is going to do its fade out animation. There we go. And then I'm going to select something and then it's going to turn black and then it's going to fade back in. So I just set these animations up uh, using the animation window um, by setting uh, the alpha channel of the color to change. And it's just a common method used for transitioning between scenes. Uh, feel free to reuse this in any of your projects. And while that's happening, while the fading in and out is happening, I'm also going to be setting my loading text to true. Now let's see where my loading text is. It's over here, but it's not active. Uh, it's being overlapped by the other things. So if I turn off my control UI, that's what we're going to see. Uh, so we can go back to that script here. We see that's exactly what we're doing. We're turning the control UI off and turning the loading UI on. And then we're setting those, we're setting the bool fade out to true. And that's what's going to trigger that animation to start. And then we're going to wait until the color of the fade uh, the alpha channel is equal to one, which means it's completely done fading. And then we're going to start loading the next scene. All right, we're going to wait until the scene's loaded. Now, this next step is specific for 360 videos. We have to wait until the video is actually prepared. Then we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start fading back into the scene. So we're going to set fade out to false. Um, and once that's done, once the alpha uh, channel of the fade image color is back to zero, then we will set the loading UI, which is just that loading text that says loading dot 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 to false. And we'll turn our control UI back on and our new scene is active. Um, so that was a lot, but this code doesn't just apply to uh, 360 videos. You can use this to do any type of loading between any scenes. All right, so I'm going to check this box to turn my control UI back on, my loading text back off like it should be. All right, and now let's go back to our video manager here. Okay, and let's just see it in action. I'm going to hit play. Going to select uh, Mont Royal, we'll see that the active scene changes to 2D lookout. Okay. Gonna select house. Active scene changes to 3D home interior. All right, it seems to be working pretty well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add a, another scene to my scenes to load. Let's add that scene that we created. Uh, what was it called? New video scene. Oh, that's a very original name. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Actually, these are just strings here. 
I'm not going to drag the scene there. I'm just going to copy the name of the scene, which is new video scene. There we go. And let's hit play and see what happens. Oh, good. My warning worked. So get this warning in my console. The amount of buttons and scenes do not match. Yes, I'm trying to load more scenes than I have buttons for. So that's not going to work. So let's create a new button. I'm just going to copy option three, paste it down there, rename, let's call it option four, slide it over, and just change the text. I don't even know if I remember what that video was. It was like a plaza, maybe? Plaza. And everything's off-centered, but let's not worry about that for now. All right, so this option four has all of the same button functionality um, as my option three, because I just copied and pasted it. Now I'm gonna go back to my main menu manager script, and now I need to update this as well. So I wanna have four um, buttons in my scene, and these four buttons are gonna be bound to uh, the four scenes to load when they're clicked. And here I want to update this element three section to show my new option. All right, so let's try to load that new one now. Hmm, it's not loading. And that's because we did not add our scene to the build settings. So to do that, I'm going to go File, Build Settings, OK. So you can see I have the scenes that I was loading already here in my build settings. I just need to get my new scene that I'm using, which is new video scene, drag that into there. All right, now let's try that again, hitting play. Now I can select Plaza, Loading. There we go. And here's my other video scene that we made earlier.